So when did mm -hmm. coconut oil enter the picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was in May of 20, uh, 2008. And what happened was there were two new clinical trials that um, came into our area for two drugs. And these were drugs that remove beta amyloid plaque from the brain and reduce uh, blood levels of beta amyloid, the soluble beta amyloid. Um, and the great hope was if you remove these plaques, it would improve cognition. And we thought, oh my God, finally, you know, here's a trial. There hadn't been one in our area for several years. Um, so uh, I set them up the screen for these two clinical trials two days in a row when I happened to be off work. And um, the night before the first clinical trial, I thought, what if he gets accepted into both studies? We have to pick one. So I'm looking for the risks and the benefits of these two drugs. And I just happened upon a press release and it happened to mention three, you know, three drugs for all, basically things for Alzheimer's. And, and the one, it mentioned the medical food that became Axona, it was called AC1202 at the time. It was still under study and it wasn't approved yet. But they had had a study, a pilot study um, of 20 people. And with the very first dose, almost half the people with Alzheimer's that took it had improved cognition scores. Wow. And memory and cognition, which doesn't happen with these drugs. And I thought, oh, it didn't say what it was or how it worked. So um, I was able to find a patent application. And <laughs> it was, uh, there's a, um, a website, it was called Free Patents Online. I'm not sure if they still exist. I haven't been able to find it lately, but um, I was able to get the patent application. I read through it. It was about 75 pages. And it talked all about um, Alzheimer's as a type of diabetes of the brain. And this was really the first time I had heard anything about this. And um, it talked about how glucose uptake in the Alzheimer brain uh, was abnormal, that this was something that started 10 or 20 years before a person developed symptoms and um, that it was due to insulin resistance and insulin deficiency in the brain. And I uh, thought, wow, that's, um, that's very interesting. And the thing about it is that, um, you know, uh, probably most of your listeners are aware that when you eat something that has, you know, uh, carbohydrate, it, it, most of it becomes glucose and glucose um, is a fuel for our brain and most of our other cells in the body. Um, but it requires insulin to get into those cells. And um, uh, if insulin is either deficient or there's insulin resistance in which the cells are not responding, glucose just doesn't get into the cells. So in Alzheimer's or certain areas of the brain, where this is happening, uh, um, it starts in the areas with, uh, that um, have to do with learning and memory, and then it just slowly progresses throughout the brain as the disease progresses. It gets worse and worse, and, and uh, you basically have very, very poor glucose uptake in a big part of the brain um, at, during the last stages of Alzheimer's. Um, so the thing about ketones <laughs> is they're, another, they're an alternative fuel for the brain. Um, and they are taken up normally in the Alzheimer brain. This is something that research in Canada, Dr. Stephen Cunin and his group uh, published in 2016. Um, they use ketone and glucose PET scans and they were able to document the same areas that do not take up glucose normally in the Alzheimer brain do take up ketones normally. Amazing. Uh, yeah, and ketones don't need insulin. They use different transporters. Um, they, they enter, um, it's, it's a biochemical chain reaction called the TCA cycle to make an energy molecule called ATP that basically virtually every cell needs to carry out its functions. Um, and glucose actually requires six more steps of chemical reactions to get into this TCA cycle than ketones do. Ketones enter more directly. It's a smaller molecule. It crosses very easily into the brain. And so, you know, the idea with that medical food, which was MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride oil, um, was that it produces ketones and the ketones from MCT oil um, would be taken up by the brain and could possibly improve memory and cognition in somebody with Alzheimer's. That was the idea behind the medical food. And I thought, oh my God, this is brilliant. Um, for one thing, I knew what MCT oil was because I'm a neonatologist, a newborn specialist. And we used to add it to the feedings of our tiniest preemies back in the um, late 70s, early 1980s. And then the formula manufacturers began adding it to premature formulas, MCT oil. And they started adding coconut oil to premature and other infant formulas because it has these medium chain triglycerides, which are in human breast milk. They were trying to mimic human breast milk. Um, 
So I knew what MCTO was. Um, and uh, I think if I wasn't a neonatologist, it, it might have just gotten right past me. You know, that's what I was wondering. I, I, yeah. I've actually told people when I tell yeah. people your story, I think <laughs> I do it incorrectly. I, I've mm -hmm. been telling people that since you worked with babies, you understood that babies were in ketosis most no. of the time. Yeah. And, and, and that was the link between the two. But it sounds like that wasn't it's necessarily you were just familiar. OK, <laughs> yeah, I was familiar with it. I, because we had used it, we, I had to order it, you know, so how much MCT oil to put in each of the feedings of these tiny babies, these were babies under two pounds. And I learned later when I learned all of this about ketones, then I came across information um, about uh, that a newborn baby, if it's the baby is strictly breastfed, will go into ketosis. And they're fat, you know, human babies are fat compared to other mammals, uh, human breast milk and, and the, uh, the milk of other mammals. Uh, cows, goats, you know, have medium chain triglycerides in them. Um, and so um, like a, a woman who breastfeeds, you know, it takes several days for the milk to really start coming in. There's a little bit there, colostrum, but not very much. And, and as a neonatologist, I thought, what in the world is the baby living off of those first few days? And, uh, but it's their fat, you know, they're burning their fat um, in that condition in ketosis. So the, some of the fat is being... Um, converted in the liver to ketones and ketones provide energy, something like 75% of the energy to the brain in the newborn. And ketones are the building blocks for lipids in the brain in the newborn. It's, it's very interesting. It converts Remarkable. Uh, other fats are converted to ketones to, to, to build these lipids in the brain and the brain's about like 60, 70% lipids. Wow. So um, I learned that part of it later. I bet Got I knew it. about MCT or just because we were literally putting it in the feedings of the babies. And yeah. so I knew it, it was out there. I knew it was out there somewhere. I didn't know I could just get it on Amazon at that point. <laughs> but um, in a patent application, I read that um, medium chain triglycerides are, the oil is usually extracted from coconut or palm kernel oil. And coconut oil, I'm like, oh, I've seen that in health food stores. And, um, but it was a little, you know, um, in medical school, I had been taught that coconut oil was an artery clogging fat. And I thought, why, why is it in health food stores? I used to always wonder that. <laughs> uh, and I had never really looked into it, you know, but I knew I could get it. And um, so what happened was um, I'm reading all of this. It's about 1 a.m. We had to be to the center down in St. Petersburg, Florida at 9 a.m. So I didn't have time to do anything about it. And um, we went down uh, for his screening. And um, Steve, uh, he failed. He did not get into the study. He scored only 14 out of 30 points on this mini mental status exam, much worse than, um, than his previous testing. And, um, you know, he didn't get in. He needed at least 16 points to qualify. And we were pretty devastated. And um, the doctor, um, she had Steve draw a clock. And um, I actually have a picture of it in my book. Oh, good. I love okay. this. I love yeah. showing people this. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is what he drew. Can yeah. You if, you're, if you're listening to this and not watching this, make sure you pull this up and we'll link it in the notes. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's not a clock. That is not a, a drawing no. of a clock, I would say. No. A few circles. A, a, a few numbers. A few numbers. Yeah. But it's kind of like a, it, it looks... Yeah, it just looks like scattered around. Yeah, it's disorganized. And um, the doctor told me that he was on the verge of severe Alzheimer's. You know? So this was really a pretty devastating visit on all, all, all counts. And so um, I knew I had seen um, coconut oil in health food stores. And there was one in Tampa where I knew I had seen it. So we drove an hour out of our way to get coconut oil. Turns out it was in health food stores all over Spring Hill where we live. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, when we got home, um, I got on the internet and, you know, I had learned in biochemistry about medium chain triglycerides back in medical school in the 70s, early 70s. Um, but um, so I had to refresh my memory about that. And I had also heard about ketones increasing during starvation. Um, uh, and, and that's, you know, another, this was published in the 1960s, late 1960s, right. Dr. George Cahill, who you mentioned yep. earlier, yep. who I got to actually meet in 2012. It was awesome. What? Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, he and Dr. Veach and I went to Congress to meet with our, um, my, my congressman from, congresswoman here from Florida. 
at that time to try to get more funding for this ketone ester research. Um, so I got to meet him. He looked a lot like George uh, Bush Sr. Oh, funny, um, funny. But it, was, it was just intriguing. And it was huh. um, about uh, three years before he passed away, sadly. So you know, amazing, yeah. Wonderful man. Um, so, um, so where were, okay. So then, so I got, uh, figured out what medium chain triglycerides are. And then I found a USDA website where you can do a search for pretty much any food and you can get the breakdown of the, the composition of the food. And I, I was able to find the fatty acid composition for coconut oil. And what I learned was that it was 60% medium chain triglycerides. So these are C6 through C12. And the, uh, medium, the, the fatty acids are carbon chains and they're named according to how many carbons are in the chain. So the medium chains, um, many people consider C6 to C12 medium chains. And it was 60%, coconut oil was 60% medium chain triglycerides. So I calculated how much coconut oil he would have to get to equal the dose of the medical food that people had responded to. And I came up with um, 35 grams, which is a little over seven, about, about seven teaspoons, a little over okay. two tablespoons. Yep. Okay, so the next day he is scheduled to... Um, do the second screening for a clinical trial. And it was in a different town. It was in Tampa um, and a different day. And basically um, the doctor there had said, uh, yeah, you can try to remind them day of the week, the season. He gave me a couple little tips all the way down. I'm trying to get him to remember. And he just couldn't remember. Couldn't come up with the day of the week. Couldn't come up with the season. I thought, oh, he's not going to do any better. You know, uh, but I had given him um, a little over two tablespoons of coconut oil about, it turned about four hours before he took the test. And um, when they took him away to do the mini mental status, they came back and start, you know, doing his blood pressure and talking about drawing blood. And I'm like, what's going on? And she said, oh, he qualified for the study. And he, his test score came up by four points from the day before wow. and he qualified, he got it um, 18 and he did. He remembered for some reason it just kicked in and, it, and probably because coconut, the ketones from coconut, uh, peak at about three hours after you eat it. Wow. Um, yeah. So he, um, he got the day of the week, right. Which was a different day. He got the season, right. He got, um, the town he was in and the floor that he was on in the institution, which wow. was different than the day before. And, um, he, um, qualified, you know, for the study and we were elated. Um, he ended up um, testing again for the other study and he, his score went up even more. He got 20 out of 30. Wow. Um, when he tested for that one again, um, we were still trying to decide which study to be in. You were allowed to try out more than once. So, um, and, but then, you know, I thought, okay, <laughs> is this really the coconut oil or did we just have a stroke of good luck? You know, I just really yeah, wasn't good day. sure. Yeah. Good day. And I thought, but there's no harm in keeping it up. So, yeah, I basically, I started buying, um, uh, coconut cookbook. I mean, that, that like that day online, I'm getting recipes for how to use coconut oil and um, just learning everything I could about it. Recipe books. And uh, there's a book called um, Coconut Cures that I read. And I just, and, and I thought, you know, the medical food was designed to be given once a day. And that's what the clinical trials were. But they actually said that the level of, from, of ketones from MCT oil peaked at 90 minutes and on average, but we're gone after three hours. And I thought, well, the brain needs ketones 24 seven. You know, the brain's a very active organ, even when you're sleeping, it's using a lot of energy. So why not give it throughout the day? And with something like coconut oil, it can be easily incorporated into cooking if you, um, you know, just know anything, uh, you know, a little bit about it. And so um, like the next day I, and every day after I just started giving them a little over two tablespoons for breakfast and then cooking with it, adding it, you know, it melts on so many different kinds of warm foods. I would use it in cooking. I cook eggs with it, you know, I got started getting coconut milk, getting flaked coconut. We got whole coconuts. We bake them. We <laughs> just, you know, and luckily we love coconut. So um, just our life became all about it. Um, but, you know, some of the changes that happened those first few days were pretty dramatic. Um, in addition to that, he started saying, he said he felt like a light switch came on his head the day he started the coconut oil. Wow. And I've had other people say that, not in those words, but they said Some, something changed. Something was different, you know, about the way I was thinking that first day. And um, he, you know, before um, he started this in the morning, he would be very sluggish. He'd come out very slowly. 
he had a weird gait, you know, he couldn't run anymore, um, but he would um, um, pick his feet up and walk real slow, just a strange gait. He had tremors, like when he would try to talk, his jaw would tremor and he would have trouble finishing a sentence and his hand would tremor when he tried to eat and um, he would have trouble like getting silverware out of the, the drawer, getting the right utensil, you know, what he wanted. He'd come back with the, the wrong one several times and he finally get the right one, couldn't figure wow. out how to get water out of the refrigerator. So within those first few days, all of that changed. <laughs> he started coming out with more energy, you know, um, uh, much more talkative, started whistling and making jokes again. Uh, he was quite the whistler too. He had these great medleys that he would whistle. And, wow. um, you know, he just totally felt different. He could get the water out of the fridge. He could get the right utensil. The tremors, the jaw tremor completely went away. We never saw that ever come back. And um, his hand tremor, he would have it until he had his coconut oil 20 or 30 minutes later, we would see the tremor would go away, which was intriguing. And um, so by about the fifth day or so, we looked at each other and we said, something has changed for the better here. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, I'm researching everything I can about ketones. And, and um, I found on Wikipedia, Dr. Richard Beach's um, uh, telephone number at the NIH. <laughs> And he was, was considered the world's expert on ketones. Um, he had um, worked with Dr. Hans Krebs and helped work out the TCA cycle decades earlier. Um, and at the NIH, he had been working on um, uh, learning everything about the possibilities of uh, ketones as therapeutics since the 1990s and had been developing this ketone ester since the 1990s. But it hadn't really gotten the funding that it needed to get mass produced and get clinical trials. So we talked about all that when I called him. He answered his own phone. Um, and, Crazy. You know, yeah. <laughs> and um, I had a whole list of questions for him. Uh, I didn't tell him what I was doing yet with Steve. I, I presented it more as a theoretical. And I asked him, I said, do you think that, um, that um, uh, taking coconut oil could help somebody with Alzheimer's? And he said, oh, no, 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 no. He said the ketone levels would be much too low. Um, you would need very high ketone levels. He thought four to five millimoles for people that know something about the levels that that would be needed Hi. to help somebody with Alzheimer's. And um, but I knew it had helped Steve, you know, at that point um, that I believed it was. And he said that um, somebody else, another man had called him several years earlier asking him that same question about MCT oil. And, you know, and he said he had told him the same thing. Well, this was it turned out to be uh, Dr. Sam Henderson, who had, uh, he's a PhD and his mother had had Alzheimer's. And he had this idea about using MCT oil to help people with Alzheimer's because of the wow. ketone production from MCT oil. So um, anyway, so I, I didn't tell him, but he sent me papers. He sent me some of his hypothesis papers. And then um, two weeks after um, Steve started taking the coconut oil, he had another clock test <laughs> and, okay, so mm, there it is. Yeah, again, for the yeah. listener, okay, now we've got a circle, we've got the clock face. I do mm -hmm. see lines across. So th this, this is starting to look a lot more like a clock. Yeah. And the thing that yeah. always, the thing that always stuns me when I'm showing this is, yeah. is showing them the time, the time difference between the first one and the second one. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it 15 days? Two, yeah, 14 days. 14 yeah, days. 14 days, yeah. I mean, again, so it's still, weeks. it doesn't look like the best clock ever, but yeah, it is yeah. a vast, vast improvement over the first one. Right, right. And then this was 37 days. Yeah. So that was a little tidier looking, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. now I'm looking at a clock. I would, I, if, right. if, if I walked across a sidewalk drawing that was done uh -huh. by my neighbor kids or something, I would say mm -hmm. they are drawing a clock. I would recognize right. that right. in 35 days. And another thing, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. that I understand this correctly. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so, so amazing to see the difference. Mm -hmm. The other thing I, I just want to point out is at this point, you guys are still eating a mixed diet. You're not eating a, a zero carbohydrate no. or very low right. carbohydrate no. ketogenic. You're just simply right. adding coconut mm -hmm. oil to the mixed right. diet that was simply already adding. there. Wow. Exactly. 